it, I'm going to tackle the RV door latch. This is everything that's included in the kit. I picked it up from a local trailer supply store. And so you have the sort of door mechanism latch, obviously. And this goes on the outside. And then you got the back faceplate, which is the inside. And then some jammed trim things. Um, I've never installed one of these. I have not had much luck finding videos online of people doing these door installs and so i'm going to take a stab at this and hopefully i don't screw up my door i installed this uh, barn gate latch which works great and arguably i could just have one of those but in order for these seals to work properly you sort of need a consistent um, force closing the door and then yeah you could argue that i could just put another barn door latch at the bottom um, but I already purchased this RV door latch, so I think I might as well go through the trouble of installing it, even though if it's gonna be a pain in the butt. All right, I did up a little mock-up for the uh, door latch, um, just using a three quarter inch piece of pine hobby board. The latch piece itself uh, needs about a half inch to fit, and then approximately this size of hole. Um, but you can see here, that sort of latch fitting in. So this would be on the inside face. And then that interior faceplate gets fastened to this. Man, this door latch is kicking my butt. <laughs> yeah, so there's not much, many resources online about how to install one of these things. Some of the videos that are out there don't uh, like the final product, or some of them just show the door and latch installed and don't give you a how-to, so. Hopefully uh, this video, I'm able to show you either how to or how not to install a door latch. As you've seen before, I made a little template, I guess, because the door latch itself does not come with any instructions or template to know what size hole you need to cut. I'm basing my hole size off of this sort of rectangle here, right? Because that's where the screws come through, and so I'm gonna need access there. But also, I'm gonna require sort of a notch area where the uh, latch itself comes through but on the front side I don't want to cut that area out because then I'm just gonna have daylight or an opening from the outside to the inside and so that gets a little tricky right because this thickness of cardboard that I made uh, works great I can fit the door latch very nicely in through the hole like so right um, but once you get into thicker materials, your hole has to get a little bit bigger so that you can fit the latch mechanism in. So that's going to be a little tricky to do, but you know, if all goes well, that should line up nice. So now basically all I'm trying to do is uh, transfer what I've learned from this template piece to the actual door itself. Here is my markings. So this represents the area that I need to cut out, and then this represents the area that I need to cut out, but not completely through to the outside. There's two lines here. So this line's the actual measurement of the opening, um, but I want to try and push the door latch, the whole assembly, as far as I can to the right here because of the gap that the door creates. As the door shuts, there is about um, a half inch of gap space. So the door latch itself, that little latching mechanism, the triangle bit there, is probably only about half an inch so if my door latch is installed about about there on the inside face of that metal plate there when it comes to shut it won't hit this interior jam now they provide a I guess receiver plate and so perhaps I can shim that somehow uh, which is probably what I'm gonna end up doing with some washers or something and so that sticks out enough for the uh, triangle bit to kind of grab into this and then actually lock. Uh, but yeah, so there is a lot to figure out on this stupid little door latch. Can't make the hole too big, because if I make the hole too big, then you're going to see the hole on the exterior side and actually not have a watertight assembly. And even this hole that I made here, it is uh, slightly too big. And you can see I can move it around and I am like really close, like basically at the maximum hole size that I can drill. I'm actually past my comfort zone here. But this size hole is required for this thickness material so that I can actually physically fit the uh, mechanism in. So basically I'm gonna start with the smallest hole and sort of work my way out if I need to. 
and try to basically wedge that thing in there as tight as possible. The other tricky thing to figure out is I'm gonna have to basically figure out where that latching hinge mechanism comes in uh, onto the door here. I basically marked out a rough point where I think it might come in and somehow line that up properly. Thankfully, this little trim piece has sort of a give so I can move it uh, left to right. I guess we're gonna start drilling holes here and uh, committing to the install of this door latch. Glad I made the opening a lot smaller than the um, actual opening I need because the jigsaw from the inside really ripped apart the aluminum exterior face here. It's just hollow here, right? And so that jigsaw blade coming in and out is actually pulling and pushing that aluminum. So this is all kind of bent out of shape here now. I think to finish this, I'm gonna have to cut it from the outside to avoid that. Try to infill a piece here. Two and a half. dropped it. Oh, that was stupid. So I think I'm going to peel this and clamp it into place so that at least I have some meat on both sides. I want the door latch both sides to have some, I guess, structural integrity. In here there's absolutely nothing. Let me get some PL glue. Okay, don't drop it. Essentially, that's between these two screw holes is a measurement, the first measurement I drew. This extra quarter inch here is basically so that I can pivot trying to clear this little locking piece here within the thickness of the door and get it into place with the smallest hole. New day. I was getting frustrated with the door latch last night, so I decided to call it. I was missing some tools and uh, other supplies anyway, so I just decided to go home and regroup. I PL'd Lou a piece in between just to give some meat, and then today I'm going to be cleaning up this opening, and hopefully I can get this door latch installed with the fewest problems possible. I picked up a Dremel because I'm going to need something to cut out this notch here that I need. I figured a Dremel would be the best thing to use. For those of you that you don't know, these little cutting bits here are super fragile, so handle with care. I've already broken three and I haven't even used this thing yet.
right, so in the depths of installing this door latch. Gone through four or five, actually probably six of these little blades already. So these things are garbage. So yeah, I got the sort of notch cut out for the actual latching part or pin, I guess. I don't know what you call it. I just gotta make it a little bit bigger because it's still not fitting. I have to make this opening a little bit bigger as well. The pain in the butt. <laughs> My suggestion would be uh, if you're buying a trailer or doing a conversion or something like this, just get one from the factory. This is actually ridiculous how time consuming and how nitpicky this thing is. But I have the door latch be roughly installed. You can see the back plate here and then the front plate. And working good. My concerns about the um, latch not reaching the interior side, I think, are now gone. You see now there's actually plenty of room for this uh, door latch to catch. I spent a lot of time cutting this interior edge down so that I can get the, the thing to fit in properly. I realized that actually the cutout I needed isn't a perfect rectangle. There's a bunch of little pieces that stick out and I'll, when I take this apart, I'll show again the uh, cuts I had to do you can see maybe in there I had to groove it a bit to uh, get that locking mechanism in and then up here again there's a little bolt that sticks out that's pre preventing me from getting this in nice and flush I'm obviously gonna have to add a spacer plate you can see there's a lot of give here I might be able to fit like a quarter inch piece or maybe something thinner I might be able to just use a piece of aluminum or something like this here would be nice so here's the cutout and uh, so I was mentioning before it's not just a perfect rectangle cutout I actually had to notch um, the lower bottom here and the upper top here so I have the door shut here and I'm actually holding it shut with the barn door latch thing I put in and now I can mark out uh, roughly where I need to be cutting for this door latch receiver and so I'm just gonna grab my marker it's roughly right there That is the location where I need to install my uh, receiver, right along this line here. I, I figured you want a nice backing plate for the edge of the uh, latch to um, go into. Yeah, I think it's going to go like this. Okay. So I have the door latch roughed in place and then I just roughed in where the receiver uh, plate is going to be going and so now we can see shut the door it stays shut great pull this open and you see that the door latch is working excellent so yeah i have to basically install the spacer plate low face plate here and then hopefully this thing remains a little bit more secure because you can see right now i can kind of move it around once i add that quarter inch piece there it'll press it together nicely and then I'll be able to finalize and then basically drill some screws into there so I can have a proper latch. I'm gonna cut this out with a Dremel so that the latch has more meat um, and actually closes better. Um, so yeah. Here's the latch. I just, I'm um, sort of holding it in place. Uh, it fits good and nice now. I'm gonna need a spacer plate between this face here and the rear handle. You can tell here that see the little stubs are sticking out and it's just cause my door isn't thick enough. This RV door latch system is, is for a thicker door. So I have three options. I have a quarter inch of this uh, acrylic plexi. Option B is to use this nice piece of black walnut, or I can use um, some leftover plywood that was uh, the interior paneling of the trailer.
So this is hemp plate number three. Going to be going with this sort of horseshoe shaped piece. And basically it's going to sit about there. And then that should give me the right offset so that this plates can pull basically the outside hinge in and give it a nice seal. And then I think maybe later on, I will finish it off with a nice trim piece here. That was exhausting, <laughs> but guys, we did. Losing time, I'm fading fast. I just wanna make it last. Try to let go of the past. I close my eyes, embrace the blast. Sleepless nights and headaches stack. Restlessness to hell and back. What's my purpose? What do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack. And sometimes you just gotta believe There's something that'll give you relief There's something that'll have what you need What you need We're broken, it's tragic We're not all elastic But maybe there's magic Believe you could have it And I know of sadness The anxious and panic The infinite vastness of all that Blackness installed and I can honestly say I'm done with it don't have to touch it here's the final product I'll show you guys it's actually quite happy with the outcome closes very nice I bought myself a uh, piece of aluminum angle and I cut it to size and basically made my own little faceplate so that I can just hide that opening there I think it looks great and uh, serves its purpose and the door now functions properly and is watertight sealed locks and go inside perfect so hopefully you guys learned something from this video if you're attempting to install this yourself just be aware that there is no instructions or template take your time hopefully there's some lessons here that you can use for your build